How's the offseason going for you guys? It's good. It's going really well. So, you know, you know, after you know, losing last year in the semis and understanding that, I mean our our motto is we own it and so we gotta own it in order for us to figure out what we gotta do uh, moving forward. And so you know, starting in January, you know, I think our kids were just driven to try to get our pride back, get our edge back, and have done a really good job of that. So, you know, we'll find out, you know, in another week we'll start fall camp and then uh, we'll start it up in Montgomery and then, you know, we'll find out where we're at and see what we've been able to do, see what kind of progress we've made, not only from a, you know, not only from a football standpoint, but just from that, that hunger, that edge, uh, that pride about who we are and what we've always been. For the players, Coach just mentioned that motto, we've got to own it. What does that mean to, to each of you guys? Who wants to um, just like owning what happened to us and owning like what we need to do to get better and just prepare for the season. What do you think, Robin? Uh, I'd say going off of Jeffy said, just owning what happened. And, uh, just coming back with a different mindset because we're not used to losing the semis and that just left a burden on us. We want to make sure we can give back to Auburn this year. Corey, what do you think? I agree with both of them say, you know, just different hunger, you know, coming back off the loss. So we got some to prove to everybody. A couple of these guys just mentioned the word hunger. I know, I, Josh, I talked to you back in the spring, and that's a word you use. Yeah. Um, and for us, it's not as much about, about hunger, though. And I, I, don't, I mean, I think sometimes we there's there's two misconceptions I think that people have about certain things when you're trying to, you know, stay on top or make sure you stay hungry, give a better version of yourself every day. And you know, for us, it's not about being hungry; it's about starving. I mean, I, I think when you're hungry, you can eat. When you're starving, you got to have it. And so for us, you know, we're starving, and so we're starving to be where we're supposed to be. And you know, everybody uses the word culture so much. I almost think it gets you so much to the point it doesn't mean anything anymore. So for us, you know, when you're young, I think it's about expectations. Uh, but when you're older uh, and you know where you want to be, I think it's about standards. So for us, we haven't really talked about we got to build a culture or fix our culture. It's about our standard. And so what do you expect of yourself every day? You know, what can you give a better version of yourself? Can you be one and out? Can you stay in the moment and do everything like it's the first time you've done it? but also like the last time you're going to get to do it. And uh, that's what I've been proud of about these guys and the leadership. I mean, that, I think that was the biggest thing. I think we needed more leadership uh, during the offseason. I think we needed more leadership, not only, you know, on the field, but off the field, in the classroom, uh, you know, in the hallways, uh, the locker room, you know, whatever it may be. And these guys have done everything I've asked them to do and more and been able to think for themselves. And I think that says a lot about them and their, uh, and their character. Coach, who's going to be an under uh, somebody that we didn't see last year under the radar that might be stepping up this year coming out the sophomore junior ranks? Well, I, I think we've got a lot of guys in that in that area. Um, you know, I think on the perimeter, I think a kid that has had an unbelievable off season, uh, Seth Parker, has had an unbelievable you know off season as far as our corner. Um, you know, he'll be a senior. Uh, he started a couple of games last year, but I think what he's been able to do throughout the off season is leadership, uh, his competitiveness. You know, his drive to become better every day and make those around him better has been awesome. Uh, we've also been able to see some guys that got banged up a little bit last year with, you know, Joseph Davis. Um, you know, those guys up front, D line wise, are going to be big for us this year. We got some young guys that we think are going to have a, a chance to, to be a big part of what we do. Um, on the perimeter at wide receiver, we're not as experienced, but I like the progress we're making uh, and the things that we've been able to do uh, to try to mature. Um, and so, you know, as far as throwing names out there, um, you know, I, I think it's just going to be as a whole. I mean, I think as a unit, I think, you know, I think the receivers are going to surface and I think they're going to be a deal that nobody thought this group, you know, what, what they were able to accomplish because nobody knows many of them. Um, and so I think that's kind of what you're going to see week in and week out. Josh, uh, last year was the first year of instant replay. You guys played some games with that. Yeah. What did you think of it? Well, being that the time we played for it, it didn't work. I didn't think a whole lot. I mean, it, it wasn't, I didn't like it just for the fact of being that we weren't able to use it. Um, but what was that game? That was the best day of the game. Okay. So, you know, we didn't do it at our place. Um, and so, no place that we played at besides Vestavia. Uh, was it used? Um, so, do you guys plan to use it at home this year? No. Mm -hmm. 
coaching every year one of the most important aspects of your team is your kicking game. You've had some outstanding kickers down there. Talk about that because the big babies is in your team, the offense, defense, kicking game. Sometimes we take for granted that kicking game, but it's such an important element. Well, I, and I totally agree. I mean, because we, we try to make sure that all three phases are important to us in our program. They always have been. Uh, it's always been a huge standard for us because we've always felt like we could gain a possession in a game, maybe gain points in a game by being really sound in special teams and being dynamic, and we have been dynamic. Um, you know, I mean, when you're – you got two place kickers and uh, they handle your duties uh, two years ago, you know, one of them was going to sign with uh, Nebraska and one of them was going to end up signing with uh, Alabama. I mean, it's hard to replace those guys. Um, so – you know, we'll do a really good job there. Um, you know, we're getting some guys ready there. Uh, you know, our biggest thing is, is when we get the ball in the red zone, you know, we got to come away with points. Um, you know, whether it's a 35 yard field goal or whether it's a throw we got to make or a run we've got to make, we got to come away with points. Um, I think your offense and your defense become your best special teams. Um, because if we don't turn the ball over offensively, we don't put our team in certain situations within the game. Well, we got to try to bounce back from it. And defensively, we do a really good job of field position. We help ourselves in special teams. <laughs> to answer your question, I mean, that's something that's going to be a, an improvement that we've got to make. Um, and I felt like we made the right strides in the spring uh, to put us in that situation. And that's what we're working on uh, week in and week out. And a lot of these guys are involved in those special teams, so they know how important it is. Well, I know as your season starts, uh, of course, you're going to have to play and, and practice leading up to it. But just what – in your mind, is the offense, you think the offense or, or defense may be a little stronger as you start the season out? Well, I will tell you this. I think defensively, you know, we're going to be better than we were last year. Um, you know, and I think the biggest thing was when Coach McGee came in last year, I mean, it's a new scheme. Uh, it's a new terminology. Our kids were so used to hearing the same thing for about eight or nine years. Uh, and so that was a transition. And then – when the transition, it becomes two things. It's transition and trust. The kids got to trust what they're asked to do. But also at the same time, when you're not used to doing it, it's hard to trust it. Um, and so, you know, with Jeff and Corey and these guys, I mean, the one thing I do like that Robbie will tell you this because he goes against them every day, I mean, the edge that we have on defense, the way we're flying around the ball, the different looks we give, um, the way our kids are active. Uh, has allowed us a chance to really improve on where we were this time last year. And I'm excited about this group. I mean, this group's got a chance to have an edge about them. They're dynamic and they can run offensively. I mean, I think we can be as explosive as we want to be. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, and this guy allows us a chance uh, when he's in the backfield um, from his arm standpoint, his feet standpoint, to be dynamic to the point of making people have to make sure they cover the whole field. Um, I think the one thing that he's done a really good job of uh, this offseason is is working on just the, the mental part of the game, um, understanding every aspect of what he gets, whether it's safety rotation, whether it's a front, whether I'm getting blitz from this side, protections, but also at the same time, understanding from an emotional standpoint how he's got to be the leader of the group. Um, and so I've been excited about that. I think offensively we got a chance to be very, very explosive. And, uh, and I've been excited about seeing that uh, throughout the progress of how we've been able to make it. And you can ask these guys when we're done. I mean, they'll tell you um, because Robbie can talk about our defense because he sees them every day. And these defensive guys with Jeff and Corey, they can talk a little bit about our offense. But, uh, yeah, we're excited about it. Robbie, this time last year you were going into your first varsity start. How do you think you're different a year later? Uh, I think really just getting that year of varsity experience under my belt. I come. I came in uh, torn labrum, uh, just getting back. And I think last year I wasn't the leader I should have been, but I think I've really grown this year, and I'm definitely gonna be the leader I need to be for my guys to hopefully bring us another state championship. Back. Are there specific things that you tried to do to grow that leadership, or is that just a function of being a year older and a, and and a year more experienced? I would say uh, keeping my emotions in check was a big thing. I'm an emotional guy. Because uh, I'm a guy, I like uh, perfection, and if I don't get it, I get really down on myself. But uh, I think really this year I've learned how to uh, control that, and I've uh, learned how to be a better teammate and just uh, be overall a better leader because I know it's my senior year and I'm a quarterback, so that's what I have to do. Josh, it was interesting when I talked to Robbie at the opening. He said that moving on from a bad play was something he had really been working on and that, and that you guys had been working on that. 
for everybody, whether it's a corner or a kicker or a quarterback, that, that's an important well, thing that you need to do. But yeah. for a quarterback, it seems to be it's magic. Well, you got to have a short memory. And the thing about Robbie and I talked because I coach our quarterback, so we spent a lot of time together. But I played the position, so I know. Um, you know, to me, whenever – if I made a bad play, I just wanted the ball back as quick as possible so I could go make a play. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can want it back too quick where you don't fix your mistake and you make the same mistake over again. But if you don't let it go, that's why we got to have a quick memory. And we talk about that all the time. It's just a short memory. And uh, and we go as he goes. I mean, from an emotional standpoint, you know, Robbie's a high, highly competitive guy. I mean, he wants to win. I mean, I don't care what it is, he wants to be first. And so I think the biggest thing is, is last year when it was really good, he got really high. When it was really bad, he got really low. And I'm just trying to teach him how to, hey, I still, hey, I was an emotional player. All right. So I want him to have some emotion. That's, that's part of his personality. I don't want to take that away. But at certain times, you got to understand when we got to control it and when we know where it feeds everybody the right way and when it feeds everybody the wrong way. And I think he's done a really good job of working on that. And so, and it, and he'll tell you, I mean, anything in life is a continuous process. And so that's what we continuously work on, um, whether it's a throw in routes on air uh, or whether it's the big play in the red zone and we got to win the game. And so, uh, but I've been proud of him for that. I've been proud of his maturity because he's a young kid. And look, we say that, we've been saying that for a while. I mean, he just turned 16 last year, you know? And so you got to understand that. From that standpoint, he's still mature. I mean, he's still learning how to handle all that. And so, uh, but I'm excited about the progress that he's made and, the, and where he wants to be in the end. Out of curiosity, have any of you guys, did you, have, you, have you shown them that Thompson lost last year? Did you guys watch the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Have any of you guys watched it? Yeah, I watched it about okay. five or six you're, times. You're shaking your head up and down, Corey. What, it just, why'd you watch it? And what'd you get out of it when you, when you saw it again? And just a bunch of stuff that, you know, we did wrong, you know, that we could improve on. So we don't want that to, we don't want to feel what we felt at the end of the game again. What about you, Rob? When you said you were watching uh, it. I watched it probably about five or six times. And, uh, I mean, the first time I watched it, I, I was just, I thought I was mad at the world because we had that game in our hands and we just slipped up and gave it away. But, uh. I think it was a gut check for us, and uh, there's a taste of reality that we don't get everything we want all the time. I think that just put a lot of, that just made our guys star to get back to this spot again, and I hope we get back to Jordan Hare and play for another state championship. Josh, you talked about the standard a little bit earlier, and everybody, I mean, it's no secret the, the fantastic success that the Hoover program has had. How do you or do you talk to your players about that record of success? Well, we talk about it every day, but it, it's just a byproduct of who we want to be as a person. I mean, like, and then you can say that's cliche, you can say whatever you want, but for us, it's, you know, every day we finish, in the workouts, I don't let them leave without talking to them. We don't start without me talking to them about something. And whether they want to hear it or don't hear it, I'm just hoping that something sinks in, you know. I mean, we talk everything about being one and out. We talk about, you know, when we wake up every day, we have an opportunity to get better. Well, you know, some guys hear it, they let it go in one ear and come out the other. But I try to have some kind of real-life story. I try to talk to them about the little bitty things. It's kind of like when you're a child and somebody tells you not to do something. You know, I mean, I got children and you can tell them, hey, that's hot, don't touch it. You know, the only way it's gonna happen is they gotta believe it. They either gotta believe you or they gotta have it happen. But the problem is when you have it happen, you have a little bit of a scar. Well, from last year, we got a little bit of a scar. And so every now and then we can look down and see that scar and it reminds us, but here's the deal, I don't, I, don't, I mean, we own that. We're gonna have to stay in that. I mean, we're, we're, we're moved on from that. We just own it. You know, it's, and I think you gotta own it before you can move forward. And uh, we have no problem understanding that. And we have the utmost respect for everybody we play. And Thompson beat us that night and uh, had an opportunity to play for a state championship. And, but I want you to understand something. This year is not just about winning a state championship. It's about being the best we can possibly be in what we do. So if I'm the best person I can be, the best player I can be, the best student I can be, there's going to be an opportunity. We're going to be the best team in the end. And so we got to focus in on that day in and day out. And, you know, it's a lot harder to stay on top than it is to get on top. And for the for the players, I mean, this is media day. We're all here. What what's one thing you want us to know about your team going into the season? Um, 
I would probably just say that we're hungry. I mean, we're ready to go. I mean, we're excited about fall camp and we're excited for the season of who we're going against and just this team coming in, like what we've been able to do in the offseason. So we're just excited. But you, Rob? Uh, I think we're going to see a new edge about us. Uh, we've got a bunch of new leaders. And I feel like we played more team ball than we did last year. And uh, we want to play for one another. So I definitely think you're going to see more of that this year. I think it's going to be a great thing. Yeah, we were really good this year on the road. You know, last year, you know, I didn't think we played with like as much fun. But this year, we're having a lot of fun playing with each other. So it's going to be it's going to be the shots. Josh, it, it wasn't that long ago that the teams that lifted year round had a big advantage, and then it seemed like the teams that played seven on seven more in the summer had an advantage. Is there something now that there's a trend that is giving teams an advantage? It seemed like those things, lifting weights year round, playing seven on seven. That's the floor now. So what, what yeah, I think the, the biggest thing now that you train in the summer has just been like OTAs. You know, it's been like organized, organized team activities, whether you do it by yourself or whether you do it with other teams. You know, I think everybody, instead of playing seven on seven, there's a lot of people just going to do OTAs with another team. Um, you know, and I'm, I would rather us do OTAs by ourselves because, you know, we got 130 guys and we know what we want to do, what we want to try to get accomplished in an hour and a half. And I'm, I'm always big, too, about these kids being kids, you know, and I, and I want them to have fun. I want them to have time to themselves. But they also know we got to grind. We've got to work hard. we got to be – make sure we're putting in the hours and doing what we need to do. But I think that's the new trend, mm-hmm. you know, and then I think next year you're going to see another trend and then you're going to see another trend. And so – and I think everybody's trying to improve their facilities. Um, and so I think, you know, it's almost getting to the point of whatever happens in college like five years ago, where it was an arms race with facilities, now it's kind of seeping down to the high schools. You just got to find a way to have an edge on everybody and be a step forward.